Good morning. In this video, I'm going to discuss polymers. So plastics are polymers. No? So there are several applications of polymers in material science. So let me share the PowerPoint. Okay, so you can find the materials on this discussion on chapter 14 of Callister. Okay, so first let's let's take a look at ano, polyethylene. Polyethylene is the most common plastic. You will know that the plastic is polyethylene if you say the sign PE no, on, on any part of the bottle or any part of the plastic. <clears throat> so... The monomer of polyethylene is ethylene. So ethylene is composed of two carbon and four hydrogens. And then it contains a double band. So in order to produce polyethylene, you need a catalyst. So generally, a catalyst is a free radical. So if you still remember your organic chemistry, a free radical is any chemical species containing an extra electron. So... <clears throat> In, in a video that I'm going to show uh, in this recording, you're going to watch the uh, fiberglass uh, making. No? So basically in that video, the catalyst uh, is using a peroxide, MEKP, you know? methyl ethyl ketone peroxide. So basically, a peroxide will spontaneously uh, decompose into a free radical. <clears throat> so this catalyzes this reaction. And then as you can see, this reacts with ethylene. And then you're going to form this compound. And then this compound is a free radical in itself. And then it will react with another ethylene atom right here. And so as you can see, the the ethylene molecule becomes longer and longer and longer. You know? So the general formula for polyethylene is C2H4N. Okay? So <clears throat> this is the fiberglass kit. So as you can see, the fiberglass kit contains the fiberglass on the, on the back. This fibrous uh, material right here, you will, you will see another picture of this in the video no so this is the fiberglass and then we have here the polyester resin basically these are monomers so if you're familiar with ester esters are derivative of carboxylic acid you know if you still remember your, your organic chemistry <clears throat> so pag, pag carboxylic acid I'm trying to discuss ester. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, it's a derivative of carboxylic acid. Of course, there are there are common carboxylic acid like your uh, acetic acid. You know, that's a carboxylic acid. <clears throat> so pag carboxylic acid, the general formula for carboxylic acid is R. C double band O O H. So for ester, in ester you you replace this hydrogen with another R group. <coughs> so an R group is a is a is a hydrocarbon, na you still remember organic chemistry is a hydrocarbon. So ester as a general formula of R C double band O O R. So, ganito yung ester. Ano? <clears throat> it contains this type of material. Pero, um, this, this, these are proprietary uh, chemicals. Kumbaga, you don't, you don't really know what this contains. Parang trade secret yan. Ano? 
there are several possible uh, formula for this ester. You can replace R, whichever R the manufacturer will place. You know? Pero this is the general equation for ester. And then, syempre, aside from the monomer, you need the, ano, you need the source of the free radical. So the free radical, usually this is represented as R and that. That is an electron, ano? This is an electron in that na yan. <clears throat> Okay? And of course, the fiberglass. This is the fiberglass, this one. Your fiberglass. So let's let's take a look at the uh, MEPK. So you says a catalyst, and that's why you only need a few amount of this, one to three percent. Uh, in in layman's term, aside from catalyst, they also call this hardener. No. But actually, in, in chemistry, this is a catalyst. Of course, I know you have encountered the word catalyst. It hastens the reaction, but in the process, it is not consumed. Right? Okay, so let's, let's take a look at the structure of MEPK. This is MEPK or methyl ethyl ketone peroxide. MEKP, sorry. MEKP. <clears throat> so when you say peroxide, it contains this oxygen-oxygen band. So basically, this oxygen-oxygen bond is very unstable. If, if you still remember your chemistry, oxygen is a very, very electronegative atom. No? So when you say electronegative, it wants to, to capture all the electron no? in the bands. So both of them, both of this oxygen are struggling to, to get this electron. So this, this bond is very unstable. So what happens is, diba, a, a, a chemical band is composed of two electrons. So what happens is, uh, one of the band goes to this oxygen, and then the other band goes to the other oxygen. So in the process, you're going to form the peroxide, the, the free radical. And this results to the production of a, of a free radical. So you're going to have uh, H-O-O-C, C2H5. CH3, no? And then you have an oxygen here with a with an electron. So this is this this catalyzes the reaction in fiberglass uh, making. This compound right here. This is a free radical. Okay, so I'm going to share a YouTube video, no? <clears throat> So that you will see the actual uh, reaction in a polymer production. This is the fiberglass reaction. Here I have the box that I'm going to be fiberglassing in today's video. Just going through a list of things that uh, you'd require to do this job. First of all, you would need some, obviously some fiberglass matting, um, chop strand matting in this case that we're going to use. You'd need a laminating roller, some acetone to clean everything up with, and a bucket. You would need a cheap disposable paintbrush, the cheaper the better, because you're just only using this once and then you're throwing it away. You would need some caulk, and I'll show you what that's for in a minute. Some hand protection, just some, some gloves. You 
you'd need a respirator, some catalyst, this is hardener, and a measuring cup just to measure the catalyst with, and you'd need some resin. And also, if you don't want to mess up your clothes, it's best to wear some overalls. Just some prep work we need to do before we can start off with fiberglassing the box. Um, the thing with uh, fiberglass matting, it doesn't in 90 degree bends. So when you're fiberglassing it, um, and th that is 90 degrees, it's, it tends to pull loose on those edges and bubble up. So what I like to do is just using some cork. Um, I put that into the edges, in, into the corners and that rounds it off and also covers covers up all the gaps in the same time so i'm going to start off just by putting some cork into the corner there and then just by using my finger i just put it in and round it off and that's good enough so even for the gaps just put in a little bit more And then by using my finger, I just round it off. So I'm just going to each and every corner and just doing the same thing. Now with all the corners filled in, we can start laying the mat. The resin to catalyst mix ratio is normally about 2%. So for every 500 moles of resin, I mix in 10 moles of catalyst. Make sure to mix this in really, really well, getting everything sort of in the corners, in the bottom, give it a real good stir, I'll, I'll say stir it for a good 30, 40 seconds at least, make sure that it mixes up really good. And then what I like to do is I um, take a couple of pieces, don't cut it with the scissors, it's better to actually tear them, because when you then overlap, it blends in a lot better that way. So don't, don't cut it with the scissors, actually just tear them and get them into some sizable ones um, that you're going to require. What I normally start off doing is just taking these and putting them into the corners first, getting them into the corners and then doing the corners first. And this way you know that the corners are nice and sealed up and um, makes it a lot better to work with. So just taking your brush, wet it in, get it right into the corners, tap it down, wet up all the drop strand. Also like to just on these edges just get some resin on there help seal the edges as well so now water will get into there right so when that's done you can then just start peeling off more strips of chops on of matting the size you require and then laying it in on the bottom and the sides. Helps pouring the resin in and then just working your way, working it into all the mat and You'll see in the beginning it sort of still white and then as it soaks it up it just goes clear. The resin also dries a lot faster in the container so the faster you can get it 
out, the better and the longer you've got to work with it. So, yun yung ano, fiberglass. Gan ganun lang siya kasimple. Uh, basically, you mix the two liquids. No? Yung, yung isa kasi catalyst lang, kaya konti lang. Yung polyester resin, yun yung, yun yung, yun talaga yung nagiging polymer. No? So, you just put a little amount of the catalyst and then the reaction will hasten up to start. And then, you're going to form the polymer. Ah, uh, maraming application yung fiberglass, ano? So, halimbawa, ah, uh, yung bumper ng sasakyan, ano? Yung usual na nakikita natin application niya. <clears throat> Pag ano kasi, di ba, usually nakakabangga kayo ng, kung nagda-drive kayo, nakakabangga ng mga aso. So, pag nakabangga kayo ng aso, yung, yung bumper ng kotse, usually it's made up of plastic. So, ang mangyayari doon, mapupunit siya. So, dalawa yung pwede niyong gawin. Either bumili kayo ng bagong bumper o kaya ipa-fiberglass nyo. So, relatively, mas mura pag pina-fiberglass nyo lang. Ang ginagawa nila doon, uh, ilalagyan lang nila ng fiberglass yung napunit. <clears throat> Tapos pag tuyo na, pipinturahan na lang. It's relatively cheaper. Kasi yung, yung fiberglass kit kanina na nakikita nyo, yung, pinir, yung pinakita ko nyo sa PowerPoint, This one, no? This one costs approximately 500 pesos lang sa Shopee, no? So, syempre, pera pa din yung talent ng magpa-fiberglass na apipiturahan kayo. Kaya, at least alam yung may idea kayo kung magkano yung magagasos nyo pag nasira yung, <laughs> yung bumper ng sasakyan. And then, aside from that, syempre, nakita nyo, ginagamit ito pag gumagawa ng mangka, no? Pina-fiberglass yung kahoy para hindi mag-penetrate ng, ng tubig para magtaloy. And then, yung, yung napubuo, it's a polymer. No? Nakukot yung, nakukot yung kahoy ng polymer na plastic. Aside from, from the fiberglass, of course, yung fiberglass is made up of glass. Alam nyo naman ng glass. It's sodium bicarbonate, uh, silicon dioxide. No? Just like the usual glass, kaya lang fiber siya. Okay? So... That's that's how <clears throat> So let me share again the PowerPoint. So ito yung ito yung fiber glass kit no? so sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo hindi ko pa lang siya tinanong pa ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina na this is approximately 500 pesos sa sa Shopee so you have the polyester resin you have the catalyst the 1 to 3% MEPK solution and you have the fiber glass no so pag halimbawa na sira yung bumper niyo nakabangga kayo ng aso <coughs> Uh, so dito yung ginagamit ng mga lagay para i-repair yung, yung bumper. Ano? So, Siyempre, plus yung talent ng latero, so, ma-approximate mo kung magkano yung, yung gastos. Ano? Siyempre, tapos pagkatapos na, pagkatapos na uh, mahil yung matanggal yung punit, usually inaano pa nila yun. Uh, pinipinturahan pa ulit. Diba? So, yung additional gastos pa rin. At least you have the idea. <coughs> Okay, ito na discuss na natin yung MEKP na catalyst list the usual catalyst sa fiberglass ano. And then generally ganun din naman yung ano, ganun din naman yung sa pag pag nagpo-produce kayo ng polymer. Usually may catalyst din talaga.
Okay, so that's, I hope you get the, ano, no, the, the basic mechanism of the reaction for polymer. No, tandaan nyo lang, free radicals plus the monomer. You, you only need a little of the catalyst kasi it's not really consuming the reaction. And then basically, you're, you're going to build a very large molecule. You know? <clears throat> okay, so these are several other types of common polymer. We have the PBC. So PBC is polyvinyl chloride. So <clears throat> as you can see, a PBC is generally used for pipes. You know? uh, and then the only difference with ethylene uh, is that vinyl contains a chlorine, a chlorine atom instead of a hydrogen atom. So when you when you place a catalyst uh, in vinyl, you're going to form a polyvinyl chloride polymer. And it's it's much stronger than a polyethylene. No? <clears throat> That's why these are generally used for pipes. Diba? Dati ang pipes natin puro lead, no? Puro iron. Iron na may lead. Tapos na-discover natin uh, detrimental sa health natin yung lead. Kaya pinalta na siya ng PVC. Okay? <clears throat> This is polytetrafluoroethylene. Or in layman terms, this is known as Teflon. So, alam niyo naman kung saan ginagamit ang Teflon ano, sa non-stick pan. Ang Teflon is yung ethylene, pinalitan yung, yung lahat ng hydrogen ng fluorine. So, ito yung monomer niya, ano? tetrafluoroethylene. So, when you put a catalyst on tetrafluoroethylene, you're going to produce Teflon. Ayan. Ito nagpipito kayo ng ito para hindi dinidik ito na. Kahit walang mantika. <clears throat> And then styrofoam. So styrofoam is polystyrene or PS. So as you can see, ethylene din yung ano niya, yung monomer niya. Kaya lang yung isang hydrogen na palitan ng benzene. So may benzene siya. Ano? So we're going to produce this styrofoam. From polystyrene. <clears throat> okay, so right here is we have the molecular weight of polymers. So we can we can see lot of uh, information from this figure. Unang una, pinaka importante, yung molecular weight ng polymers. No, as you can see from this, is in the order of Uh, thousands of grams per mole. No? Ito yung mga, ito, mga 20,000 grams per mole. Unlike, for example, yung bawa, yung water. Iba yung water, ang, ang molar mass ng water, 18 lang. Ano? So ito, malaki-malaki siyang molecule. Imagine niyo 20,000 grams per mole. No? Malaki siyang molecule. So ito yung distribution niya. So, pwede merong mga 5,000 lang. Iba-iba yung size nila. Ano? Merong... 15,000 lang, meron ng mga 25,000. <clears throat> okay? So, how do we calculate the average molar weight of polymer? So, basically, kamukha din kung natatandaan nyo kung, pa, kung pa, paano kinakalculate yung average molar mass. So, imumultiply mo lang siya ng fraction niya. So, yung sum ng fraction times yung uh, m sub i, that's the That's the fraction molar mass, no? And then you just take the sum. Kalimbawa, um, you have two fractions. So one of the fraction is 1,000. The other fraction is 2,000. Kalimbawa, 50-50 sila. So 0.5 times 1,000 plus 0.5 times 2,000. So basically, you're going to get something like 1,500. No? So yun, yun, yun kinakalculate yung average molecular weight ng polymer. Pero ang dapat niya talagang tandaan, yung molecular weight ng polymer is in the thousand grams per mole. Ano? Yan yung generalization. Okay. Tapos another way to characterize a polymer is the degree of polymerization or DP. Basically, ang degree of polymerization or DP is, is calculated 
by dividing no the average molar mass ng kinumpit natin kanina the average molecular weight with the uh, molar mass of the monomer halimbawa uh, ang average molar mass ng polyethylene ay 1000 no tapos yung monomer niya di ba ethylene lang naman yun so c2 24 uh, di ba tol ng carbon na 24 plus 4 na hydrogen so 28 so, mga 1,000 divided by 28, ang degree of polymerization niya ay mga 1,000, mga 4, ano? Ganun lang, hindi ba nila naman yung dalawa? So, roughly, parang a 40 pala, 40. No? 40 times uh, 25 is 1,000. <clears throat> roughly, parang ano, parang degree of polymerization is the average number of uh, monomer per molecule of polymer. Parang ganun yung degree of polymerization. Okay, so let's let's try to solve some sample problem. Okay, this one is, this problem, problem 14.1, illustrate the calculation of uh, degree of polymerization. So given yung uh, mole fraction ng bawat molecular weight range, ng bawat 5 to 10,000, about 5 to 10,000 ang ang mole fraction ay 5%, no? 0 0.05. So ang ginagawa, kinukuha yung yung m sub i ito yung mean, no? So 5,000 plus 10,000 divided by 2. So 7.5. So ito 0 0.05. So i-multiply niyo lang tong dalawa, 7.5 times 0 0.05. Yeah, 375. And so on, ganun lang yung ginagawa. So 10 to 15 ang average ng 12.5. Tapos 16% siya i-multiply niyo rin dito, you're going to get 2,000. And then you just add all of this. So the average molar mass is around 21,150. No? So nandito yan. Nandito yan. Kasi yung pinakamarami. 27%. 21,150. Ito yung average molar mass no? Uh, I think this is ano ba to? PBC. PBC to. Ano? <clears throat> Tapos you are asked to determine the degree of polarization. So in order to determine the degree of polymerization, basically first you need to determine the molar mass of its vinyl. Uh, kasi di ba PBC of its monomer. So ang PBC, tandaan nyo naman yung structure kanina, di ba? You have two carbons and one chlorine and then three hydrogen, di ba? Tandaan nyo pa yung structure kanina ng vinyl. So a vinyl is meron dalawang carbon. She have a double band. So she have three hydrogens. Ayun, yun, no? So she have a, a chlorine atom. So ito kukunin yung molar mass nito. <clears throat> so yung dalawang carbon is 2 times 12. Ito yun. Plus tatlong hydrogen, 3 times 1.01. Okay, and then one, one chlorine is 35.45. So that's why the average molar mass of vinyl is 62.5. So basically, divide nyo lamang itong 21,150 ng 62.5. Uh, <clears throat> the answer is 338. So yung degree of polymerization is basically, uh, ibig sabihin nun, you have an average, you have 338 vinyl molecule no? on, a, on an average uh, polyvinyl molecule. Ganun kadami, ano? 338. So I hope you get it. This is quite basic. Tapos, <clears throat> I find this, I find this problem quite interesting. Ano? Yung palang soft drinks, no? Kahit hindi mo siya buksan, sumisingo pala yung carbon dioxide. Kasi yung palang carbon dioxide, nagdi-diffuse siya dun sa polyethylene, dun sa ano, sa pet bottles, no? Pet bottles is polyethylene terital, terital, teritalate, no? PET. So, the clear plastic bottle used for carbonated beverages, sometimes also called soda, are made from PET. The P's in pop results from dissolved carbon dioxide. So, PET is permeable to CO2. Hindi <laughs> ka alam. Ngayon ko lang nalaman yun. Ito lang sa Callister. No? So, the carbon dioxide is stored in pet bottles will eventually go flat. This is, it lost its piece 
no it lost its carbon dioxide a 20 ohms bottle of soda has a carbon dioxide pressure of about 400 kilopascal ah uh, pero mataas din pala no <clears throat> Um, atmospheric is 100, so four times the atmosphere no? inside the bottle. And the CO2 pressure outside the bottle is 0.4 kilopascal. So assuming conditions of steady state, cal calculate the diffusion of flux of CO2 through the wall of the bottle. So tandaan nyo pa naman, ano, diba? basically yung, yung flux natin, uh, N sub A, is directly proportional yung yung constant of proportionality is the diffusivity. No? Ano ko ba? N sub A is directly proportional to yung diffusivity. Saan? So change in concentration. Kaya lang gases tayo. So, so change in pressure divided by dun sa thickness. No? Dun sa thickness ng <clears throat> ng ano, ng ng, ng battles. No? So ganyan lang naman yun. So, ito yung unang pinapasolve sa letter A. So, ito constant lang naman. May kinukunan lang naman tayong table nito. No? So, sa problem nyo, bibigay ko lang naman to. Ito kasi hindi nakalagay. Yan, given naman yung pressure natin, 400, a 0.4. Tapos, also, ibibigay din naman. Ito, nandito yung, ano, dito yung thickness. The wall thickness is 0 0.05 cm. <clears throat> so, if the paddle must lose, loss, ano, 750 uh, cc, Standard temperature pressure, STP, of CO2 before the pop taste flat. What is the shelf life for a bottle of pop? So, ito kasi, ang unit nito ay, gagawin natin unit yan ay halimbawa cubic centimeter per sec. Per, <clears throat> pwede yung cubic centimeter per area per unit time, you know, per second. You know? <clears throat> Ganyan yung unit mo. So basically, ang magiging formula natin when we solve letter B is yung N sub A, multiply natin ng area, multiply natin ng time, tapos magiging equal siya dun sa, sa volume ng ano, volume ng gas nung, at STP. Ano? Basically, ito equation natin. So kung alam natin to from letter A, ito given naman, tapos ito given din, we can, we can solve the, uh, the time corresponding for to answer that would be enough given naman to naman <clears throat> given naman yung, yung a is 500 so let's let's try to solve this problem okay so ito yung ating equation so j nga pala yung ginagamit na flux kay calister ano tapos ito yung permeability value this is the same as diffusivity <clears throat> uh, Iba lang yung unit niya in terms of pressure siya. Ano? So 0 0.23 uh, cubic centimeter STP centimeter centimeter squared seconds pasta. Ito yung unit ng PM. Sa table lang naman to. Ibigay ko naman to pag sa, ano, sa exercise niyo o kaya sa exam niyo. Okay, so we have 400 pascal. Ito yung final. Ano? Ito yung initial. Uh, 400,000 kilopascal kasi, di ba? 400,000 kilopascal. Tapos ito yung thickness, 0 0.05 centimeter. So may negative dito kasi negative to para maging positive yung flux natin. So if you're going to use your calculator, ito tama na yun. Na. So it would be 400 minus 400,000. Divided by 0 0.05. Okay. Tapos times 0.22 is minus 7. We're supposed to get 0 0.18 times 10 to the minus 7. Ah, that's 0.23 times 10 to the minus 13 pala. Okay. 400 minus 400,000. So, we come on. Uh, 0.05. 
say times 0 0.22 only minus 30. So 1.83 times 10 to the negative 7. Okay? 1.8 times 10 to the negative 7. So if we're going to analyze the units, so we can annotate. <clears throat> so centimeter, this will cancel out with the centimeter right here. Tapos yung Pascal, this will cancel out with the Pascal right there. So ito yung unit natin. Ano? Cubic centimeter. Uh, carbon dioxide at STP per centimeter square per second. So if you still remember, uh, per per unit area, ang flux. No? <clears throat> okay, so kamukha ng formula natin kanina. So 750 cubic centimeter, this is given. We divide lang natin ng flux. <clears throat> yung flux natin is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 7. Tapos yung area natin ay 500. So ito yun. Pag multiply niya yung dalawa. Okay? So you're so, supposed to get 8.3 times 10 to the 6. Diba? Kamukha din lang nung analysis natin kanina. Ito yung flux. And then flux is just... Uh, sorry. <clears throat> flux uh, is uh, divided by area, no? Kasi ito given to. So times, multiply nang natin yung flux ng area at saka ng time. Ito yung flux natin. And then, ang mayayari dito, lalabas yung volume. Kaya yung sinabi ko sa yung solution ko na yun. <clears throat> so kung ang volume natin is given to be 750 cubic centimeter at SDP, Tapos yung flux natin ito, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 7. Tapos times the area. <clears throat> so yung area natin is 500 centimeter squared. Tapos times the time. So yun, solve nyo lang yung solve natin yung time. So tingnan natin kung we're going to get the same answer. So 72 alpha equal... 1.8 so minus 7 okay, times 500 alpha x shift sold. Yeah. I'm, I'm also getting 8 8.3 no? times 10 to the 6 seconds. So 8.3 times 10 to the 6 seconds we're going to divide this with uh, 3600 per hour enough. So that's approximately 2,315 days. And the hours, pala to hours. That was divided by 24. 96 days. 97 days. You know? So 97 days, that's approximately three months. So tama naman. Okay? Tama naman. It's just relatively simple. Okay, so I hope you get something from, from this video. Na? So I'm gonna say so that video. I will I will try to post some exercise for this topic. So see you in the next video.